Good morning and welcome to another episode of Studying Like a Nation. Uh, today, our goal is to uh, learn how we can use the data logger to measure acceleration due to gravity on Earth. Now, as soon as we mentioned the term data logger, a lot of people just go, ooh, I don't really mess with them. Uh, that, how come you mean the creeps? Well, today, I would like to show you a few tips and tricks to make sure that you can actually handle this baby up here like a professional agent. So let's get started. Uh, when we talk about measuring gravity, the first thing people think of is using a pendulum to measure well the um, period of the pendulum and such. You can do that with your um, data logger, but I'm not going to do it. I think that's a little bit uh, you know, convoluted as you can actually uh, use a slightly more direct method. So in front of me, I've got this thing called the picket fence. Um, the picket fence basically is a piece of purse bag in which you have precisely measured transparent bit and non-transparent bit. So basically, if you look at the setup of the experiment, your data logger is connected to a light gate. A light gate, essentially speaking, is an infrared sensor. You are sending a beam from the bottom to the top on the other side, and whenever it's got interrupted, see the LED up there? It's blinking, isn't it? It's basically telling you that the beam has been disrupted. And basically, you can measure the duration of disruption as the picket fans fall to the ground. Now, to illustrate this a little bit better, I would like to show you a close-up shot of the data logger. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, this is a close-up shot of the setup. So basically what happened was, I positioned the picket fans just above the data logger and let it underwent free fall. And as it fall through the data logger, the signal was registered on the screen like such. Alright, so when you look at the data out there, it goes from 100 back to a value close to zero, alright, and then back up again. But what you would also notice is the width is actually gradually decreasing. Now if you look at the horizontal axis carefully, that refers to time, isn't it? Yeah? So basically what I'm telling you is, should you imagine the top peak out there, yeah, that refers to the transparent bit, all right, on our picket fence, and the trough up here, this bit up there, refers to the opaque part of the picket fence. I'm telling you that it takes less and less time for it to pass us through each subsequent segment of the picket fence, or in other words, the picket fan is speeding up. Now, this is the old school way of measuring the acceleration. I hope you can appreciate that since you know the distance by measuring this with a ruler, by the way I measured that early on, the width up here is about 20 centimeters or so. All right, so that width up there refers to how long it takes for 20 millimeters width of uh, um, your transparent picket fence to get past the data logger. Oops. So in other words, you had distances and you also can find out time. Distance divided by time, you'll get speed. And you can do the same for the next subsequent segment of reading. So therefore you got two speed, V minus U over T, that's how you find out acceleration. Now you can do that for every single segment up there, all right, and find out the acceleration, plot that on a graph and take the average and such. But you know, I'm a professional Asian, I don't want to waste that much time on it. I'll cheat by using a slightly uh, more advanced approach. Let's go to uh, home button up there. All right, and we will go to timing instead. All right, under timing, I will pick acceleration. Next, instantaneous, which is at A. And then I will select picket fence from your data logger. Next. Now, the other two diff information up there is extremely critical, should you need to do this in your um, school experiment. Picket fence pitch, that refers to the distances from the leading edge of the transparent bit to the trailing edge of the opaque bit. 
So I took out a ruler early on and measured that to be precisely 40 millimeter. Now you have to do that for uh, different picket fences and such. And on top of that, uh, the calculation increment, I'll actually bump it up to 10. In that way, you're doing more averages and as a consequence, a more accurate result. Now, can you do more than 10? In theory, you can, but the machine itself, I think that's a physical limit to it. Unfortunately, 10, I think, is the biggest number you can possibly pick. And then you can just go finish. All right, so let's get on with dropping the picket fence now and actually trying to read the results slightly differently. Now, uh, when it comes to safety precaution, I hope you can see that the perspex picket fence is made of um, acrylic plastics. I should say perspex, sorry, that was stupid. But anyway, if you actually drop such a brittle piece of plastic onto tile floors, it's going to crack in, uh, you know, after a couple of drops. So therefore, please make sure as part of safety precaution, trying to do it on carpet and moreover, you would expect to wear safety goggles should you don't wear glasses. Right, before you initiate a drop, please make sure that your light gate is perpendicular to the retort stand itself. Any skewed movement up there is going to influence your results. Now onto the picket fence. As you drop this, be extremely careful. If it's dropped at an angle, think about this, right? That would mean that there will be a longer distance of your opaque and transparent bit. So basically, what I'm telling you is, remember how you actually calculate the acceleration again. If the computer now interprets a slightly longer distance up there, it wouldn't actually know about it. So therefore, all your calculation will be off. So therefore, please make sure that you're doing a vertical drop. And the other part of frustration in this particular experiment could be potentially this picket fence hitting the side of your um, light gates and result in error as measurement. So please be careful about it. And without further ado, let's start the experiment. Keep it straight. see this, I'm going to break it closer. Nine point eight zero one seven zero. This is how a professional Asian does it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. Of course, in practice, you will have to re repeat this a couple of times to maintain reliability. And again, hope you guys can study like a nation. See ya.